of community relations in the Royal Grenada Police Force and also Mr. Elvis Maureen, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands and for the operational guidelines for farmers and fishermen. We know a lot was said yesterday, so we're here again to just update you just to ensure that everybody knows what will be taking place, as we mentioned, the operation guidelines for farmers and fishermen. So without any further ado, I will turn you over to Superintendent Vani Kerwin. Good afternoon, and thank you very much, Leslie. Um, yesterday, press briefing, I did indicate that there are some issues that needed further details and further drilling down into. The committee worked overnight and have been able to finalize the, some of the issues were mentioned yesterday, and I'm happy today to bring you some details as it relates to the operations of the fishermen and farmers as we go into the shopping days for the next three days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So in keeping with the exemption granted to fishermen, the Royal Grenada Police Force, acting on the advice of the Cabinet of Grenada, hereby advises that only small boats will be allowed to engage in fishing with two persons per boat. With regards to seine or net fishing, 12 persons are permitted to manage the net with three being positioned on each side. Provisions are not currently made for the larger type fishing trawlers, but this will be taken into consideration and a subsequent announcement will be made. The RGPF commend the fishermen for understanding to ensure that physical distancing protocols will be observed in the permitted activities. To ensure compliance with the operating guidelines established by the RGPF, a police officer will be present to observe the activity whenever a net is pulled in. The RGPF advises that should there be any violation, the activity will be discontinued. Under the approved exemption, fishermen are not permitted to sell the catch directly to the public to prevent the potential for crowding and violation of the physical distance protocol. All sales will be made to licensed vendors who will package the produce in two, five, and 10 pound bags for sale to the public. The public is advised that all sales will be made from the fish market or by the vendor traveling through the villages. All fishing activities, including sales, will take place on regular shopping days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. With regard to farm produce, six farmers market will be established on the three assigned shopping days this week at the following location. The National Athletic Stadium car park, St. George, Victoria Vegetable Market, St. Mark, Guav Vegetable Market, St. John, Natural Works, St. David, such as Bos Terminus, St. Patrick, Grenville Bos Terminus, St. Andrews, P.T. Martinique Emma's Supermarket, and on the sister island of Karakou, residents will be served through the MNIB depot and established vendors in keeping with the protocol on COVID-19. Farmers wishing to sell the produce at the established markets on the assigned shopping days are required to contact the Ministry of Agriculture on telephone number 417-2355 to confirm their participation. The RGPF advises farmers and vendors of the following guidelines. One, a, ma a maximum of two persons will be allowed per vending station in keeping with the physical distancing protocol. Two, Mask or other type of face covering must be worn at all times. Three, frequent hand washing or the use of hand sanitizer is strictly required. Four, 
A vending station may be established with small tents or at the back of a pickup where feasible. Five, farmers and vendors should have a minimum of 700 pounds of fresh produce. Six, fresh produce should be prepackaged in bundles valued at $5, $10, and $20. Farmers are expected to set up between the hours of 6 a.m and 8 a.m. Produce should not be stored on site at the end of the shopping day. Farmers and vendors must maintain the assigned location over the designated period of the three days. The IGPF order advises that small farmers and vendors and established roadside vendors are allowed to operate their activities on the assigned shopping days of Thursday Friday, and Saturday of this week. All are reminded to adhere to established protocols on COVID-19. The erection of new boot or vending stations along the roadside is not permitted. And persons should refrain from loitering in the vicinity of roadside vending locations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent Vanny Cohen. Uh, P.S. Maureen, any brief statement you'd like to make before we take questions? Well, it's not much, but I, I just want to say thank you very much for this initiative. Um, the Ministry of Agriculture is very pleased because we, we know, you know, when farmers' livelihood basically is affected, and uh, so we are happy to provide an avenue for them to, to really serve the public fresh produce. And we know this is twofold because, of course, at this time, we are advised to consume, you know, as much fresh produce as possible. Um, at the time of preparing this document last night, um, as we made our various side visits today, we sort of upscale a bit. So um, we also we provide some tents because we didn't have that in the mix. But of course, the condition is, is terrible out there. So we'll be providing some tents at location that would help, you know, to ease the burden of persons, you know, being there. And I just want to just encourage again persons to, to behave in a very orderly manner and to understand that this arrangement may not be, very, may not be perfect, but of course, as time goes on, we, we, we are looking at three days, so therefore we can improve things as we go along. So we want people to cooperate as much as possible and to bring whatever to our attention. We will have officers available there to, you know, to hear the concerns and the complaint so we can move forward. So we want them to, to really take this you know, into serious consideration as we try to maintain order and, of course, observe all the protocols as it relates to COVID-19. Thank you, P.S. Um, it seems as though nobody has a question as yet. Somebody has a question? All right, uh, colleagues, anybody has questions? A brief statement was made by both Superintendent Kerwin and P.S. Elvis Maureen. Anybody has questions? Mikey Hutchinson, good afternoon. Go ahead. All right, good afternoon, um, gentlemen. Thanks for the opportunity once more. Um, in your presentation, um, Superintendent Cohen, you mentioned a small boat. How do we define a small boat? Sorry, thank you for your question, Mikey. There are different types of fishing boats. There are the uh, pirog, there are the fishing trawlers. Here we're referring to those, 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 um, those small boats that usually have three or four persons on board. But in this particular construct, um, the, the regulation does not, or the rules does not, um, have in place for more than two persons. We're not talking about the fishing trawlers that usually um, butt along the carinage. Those carry a lot more than two. They are outside of the construct that I think um, the, the rules are, 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 are speaking about. So we're talking here about those small fishing boats that usually butt. If you go up the western side, you see them um, tie along the, 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 along the seashore. Those are the boats that, are, um, that I'm speaking of here, and not necessarily the bigger trawlers that will go out for two and three and four days on the outside that require five, six, or seven people. Mikey, you have another question? Yes, please. Now, there are boats that may be docked 
at a particular dock and the, the owner or workers may be at another location. Are there spe special provisions made for these uh, workers who would need to um, traverse from one area to the next to get to the, to, to the boats? The answer definitively is yes. Um, persons wishing to be able to travel within the coffee period to access the boats, they're asked to uh, apply for the necessary pass and permission, so to be able to do. So permission and passes are available, but persons will need to apply for them. All right, um, Duncan, good afternoon, are you there? Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, um, you're live, please go ahead. Duncan, go right ahead. All right. Jared, Jared, go ahead. Okay. In terms, sorry, hold on. In terms of the the the, the fishermen, um, they are expected to go out. We know you said no more than eight persons for the seine fishing and two persons for the for the vessels, the small vessels. In terms of the transition of the fish from the fishermen to the vendors. How would that be done in order to, well, well, looking at the social distancing regulations, how would that be done in terms of the transition of the fish to the fishermen to the vendors? Let me correct part of what you have said first before I answer the question. The amount really is 12 and not eight as you suggested. And there have to be an arrangement between the fisherman and the vendor to be able to determine how the vendor would take possession of the fish that is being caught. Um, as I see it here, I can't tell you that there is a definitive way of doing it. There has to be an arrangement between the fisherman and the vendor as to where and how the transfer is going to happen. Gerald, do you have another question? Yes, I do. All right, go right ahead. In, right. So vendors who normally, I'm talking about the market right now. So vendors who normally come to town, with that restriction, they are not allowed. I'm just trying to clarify. Those who normally come to the St. George's market, they would not be allowed to travel across the borders. I'm just trying to clarify just for certainty. Vending is taking place on, on, on a parish basis. So to answer your question definitively, if you are a vendor from outside of St. George, um, it might be difficult for you to come to St. George to actually do your vending on this particular day. All right, and hence the reason why Farmer's Market is set up in each parish to ensure that vending can be done on a parish basis rather than cross parish boundaries to facilitate the vending. Uh, Jared, are you through? Yes, for now. Thank you. All right, great. Um, is Duncan ready? All right, it seems as though Duncan is not ready. So, uh, Superintendent Cohen, maybe you can just go. Hello. Over. Hi. <laughs> are you ready now? Yes, I'm ready now. All right, go right ahead. Um, my question is in relation to um, farmers. Um, there are a lot of farmers within communities that don't act as vendors in terms of um, they don't go to the market to, to sell their produce. They sell it within their communities. Will they be afforded an opportunity to do the same um, on those given days as well? In fact, I indicated that in my presentation that, yes, these farmers would have an opportunity to sell their produce in the villages. But bearing in mind that they must observe those protocols that is set up under the COVID-19 regulation in that ensuring that the space in the six feet spacing is in place, ensuring that clustering and gathering and overcrowding does not happen. But to answer your question, yes, farmers who do not sell to vendors and wish to sell for themselves directly, they can do that within the village setting. Do you have another, Duncan? Um, I, I just, I just um, want to clarify as well. Um, are farmers able to move about in vehicles? So we may have vendors who don't want to go to the a national stadium to vend their produce, but they may want to drive through communities and do that. Will they be also afforded the opportunity to do so? 
Good afternoon again. Now, this would definitely defeat the purpose that we are trying to put forward. In, in our whole arrangement and operationalization, we, at, at some of the venues, we allow for persons to come with their vehicle. Um, we don't want to have, you know, people just moving around and moving across, because remember, you will not be able to, to move across the border, right? So we are saying to persons that to, to make use of the facilities that are available, you know, as much as possible, we would prefer persons with a lot of produce to, to go to the market, unlike setting up their own establishment by the road. We think this is critical. So, so we are creating that avenue for persons to, to come in a very organized way where we can control as much as possible the activity. Duncan, you have another question? Yes, hopefully my last. Um, uh, quickly, for, for vendors who normally buy their produce from farmers outside of the parish that they vend in, so for example, I live in St. George and I vend in St. George, and uh, I buy my produce from, let's say, St. Andrew, how, or what arrangements are being made to ensure that these um, that, that, that this produce is re replenished? For, for the last few weeks, we have been advising the public that to move about during the period of the curfew, you will require a pass to do so. We have made passes available to farmers to be able to tend to the crops in the field. And if, if somebody wishes to do exactly what you are asking, then all they need to do is to apply for the requisite permission, stating the purpose and the business, why they need to go out of the parish. It will be considered, and I'm sure that if there is uh, merit in it, a pass or permission will be granted to them to go outside of the parish, to collect the produce, to come back into the parish to sell. But cross-border um, boundaries have to be re regarded and respected. But we have been allowing supply trucks to cross the parish boundaries. We have been allowing other persons to cross the parish boundaries, but it has to be on a case-by-case -case basis. A appli an application has to be made and considered, and if there is merit in it, permission will be granted so to do. Hi, um, Superintendent Cohen. I just want us to make sure we have it clear so that people understand on, on the days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, when these activities will be carried out as the shopping days. Um, just put it into context for us, when people must know, okay, this is cut off point and you need to be back inside. I think it's important for me to remind the public that we are still under 24 hour curfew. These restrictions, this curfew, uh, there is some leeway that, are, that, is, that is now being given. And, and I, I'm glad that you asked that question because a lot of questions have been posed to me. I'm understanding now that um, nail technician shops are going to be opening and gyms are going to be opening and hairdressing saloons are going to be opening. I want to, I want to caution the public here. We are not there yet. Those businesses are not allowed to be opened at this point. Vending supermarkets are given an opportunity to extend the time so that produce can be sold and be acquired by those who, who need it. So shopping for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Vending that we are speaking of now, the, the fishermen and the farmers who are vending, that process also is within the stipulated time of when shops will be opening, which is nine and five. And I want to take the opportunity to say here that farmers cannot set up prior to six o'clock. So setting up in these farm markets is between six and eight, and they will go up to five o'clock, which is the same time that the supermarkets will be allowed to open. At the end of five o'clock, we know it's going to take some vendors, some farmers, some customers, some time to get back home based on where you live. So if you come to the, to the farmer's market, probably will take you about half an hour or so to get back home. So by 5.30, 6 o'clock, we do expect everyone to be back at home and the coffee kicks in again for the night until the next morning. Thank you. Mikey, go right ahead. Okay. Um, uh, particularly for the fishermen, what time, what's the earliest time can they go out to catch their fish? Thank you very much, Mikey. 
I, I, um, I believe they would have to still stay within the, the whole parameter in terms of the movement. Now, um, we, we allow some never farmers to leave, I think it's from six, six, six o'clock, right? So in that case, I would, I would expect that um, they shouldn't be moving before six, of course, but they can move to get to wherever the boats are and they can, they can, they can move from there and come back within the, the stipulated time. Gerald, go right ahead. Mikey, uh, one sec. Gerald, go ahead. Okay. Superintendent Cohen, you would have highlighted that the farmer's market for St. David's was at the, the, the nature center. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Um, why the nature center and why not the playing field, which is larger, which which would um, be able for people to practice social distancing? Good afternoon. Now, we, we chose that area because um, those of us who, who know St. David's well, is one of the areas where persons already have established um, boots on the roadside selling vegetables, right? So you can go through St. David's and you can get that facility. So we are, we are, we are trying just to pull the bigger vendors in that location. And as I said earlier, we are looking at it. It's not just um, if, if it means that after tomorrow's experience, we realize that, hey, you know, you need to find some way that with, with a little more space, we would do that, right? But for now, as I said, we would not get it perfect, but we believe based on some of the activities already that are taking place within the parish of St. David, we can, um, we can ac accommodate, you know, to, to a great extent in that area. Do you have another, Gerard? Yes. Go ahead. Just, a, just my final. Um, Superintendent Cohen, I think this um, in terms of for farmers as well as fishermen, you would have highlighted several restrictions, regulations. Um, what are the pen penalties if the farmers or fishermen break such restrictions or regulations? The Act provides for a fine of $1,000 or imprisonment for 12 months. So any of the provisions of the act that is violated, the perpetrator can be fined up to $1,000 and can be in prison for up to 12 months. All right, um, Mikey. Go ahead, Mikey. Uh, you need to unmute your mic, Mikey. Yes, yes. Um, the fishermen are to sell the fish to the known vendors. I, I'm not sure I heard anywhere speaking of um, what designated places where they can get the ice to purchase, whether or not there are spe specific stations for them to purchase the ice or they can just go looking for ice. Mikey, the, um, the vendors basically would operate, and, and, and we're talking about people who are established, people who are actually applying that trade before. So um, the, the, the the facility number of where you get ice because I, I, I um, we have the the markets, the fish markets are the areas basically that where you have some of the activities taking place, so the ice will be provided that way. Now, um, what I need to validate because a very good question you ask because in some of our fish markets, not all the places the plant is up and running, so that is something that we need to offer some clarity in terms of how we go forward. So I need to double check that and maybe um, give some clarity a bit later on that. You have another question, Mikey? No, that's it. All right. Nobody. Seems we have no more questions. So, gentlemen, I think we can wrap up. We said we wouldn't be very long today. So, Superintendent Cohen, I'll give you the opportunity, first of all, and then, of course, P.S. Maureen. But um, just to make it clear, the shopping days is from 8 to 5. The time is 8 to 5. the opportunity to make any final remarks you'd like to make. In closing, I just want to uh, urge the public that tomorrow is not a day for social activities. In fact, the next three days are not days for social activities. You should only be out of your house tomorrow if you're going to the supermarket, mm -hmm. if you're going to the farmer's market, mm -hmm. or, in other words, you must be purposeful mm -hmm. 
because we're still in the area of, we're still under curfew, and leeway is given so that these activities can take place, and it must be focused on that. So all of the, the other businesses that I, I, I heard would be opening, I want to urge, please pay particular attention to the regulation. Do not violate the terms of the regulation. Stay within the ambits of what it is asking us to do. And the next three days are, soup, are shopping days, days for, the, for fishermen and for farmers only. And you have to be purposeful about your business, not just drive around Grenada sightseeing, not just coming out to having a good time. It is not business as usual because we are not at the stage where we can let our guard down. So I want to urge you, if you're going to be out, please wear your mask. Please wear some form of face covering. Wash your hands as often as you can. Use hand sanitizer as frequently as you can use it and consider the next person to you, the next person at the side of you to be infected. If you take that approach and you see everyone else as somebody who has the virus, you know that what you have to do to keep yourself protected and safe. Thank you, Superintendent. P.S. Maureen? Thank you very much. I, I, I am just happy because the Ministry of Agriculture we have been listening to, you know, the calls and the complaints from farmers all the time. We do appreciate what they are doing, you know, in terms of helping to keep the sector where it is. We know that they invest a lot, and it, it's sometimes painful to see things go to waste. So I want to ask the farmers and, of course, vendors to please abide, you know, by the regulations. I, I believe... Um, in other words, this should be a precursor as to how we, we go forward because we are making requests all the time, you know, of the RGPF. And, of course, um, we, we are happy that today we can at least give something good back to the farmers. So we want them not to, to spoil it, as we will see. I also want to ask person to take, you know, the period that we are in very seriously. Um, people can sometimes, you know, be a little bit relaxed we have to understand that we are no way close to out of this yet. And while I see many opportunities out of this, I believe, first of all, we have to strive to remain healthy. We have, we have to strive to make sure that this nation is healthy. You know? and, and I want to ask everybody you know, to play his or her part to ensure that we continue to minimize, and of course, not to have maybe one more case. One more case is one you know, to many. So I want to ask persons to really cooperate as much as possible and let us find time to really be innovative and creative because out of this, there are many opportunities to be derived, you know, from this, in particular, the, the agriculture sector. You know, I, I think this creates a gold mine for the agriculture sector. So I want to say to everybody, let us keep going and let us see what we can do. Um, I, I before I come here, came here, I realized somebody talked about the exporters. You know, what happened with the exporters? These are things that we are working, you know, on, and gradually we get there. So at least um, as, as, as we, we continue to discuss, who knows, maybe in the next couple of days we might get something out of this. But for now, our focus is to give the farmers and the vendors, you know, some leverage, and we are very grateful. I just want to say something that um, I've omitted it. I've omitted. Mm -hmm. In yesterday's press briefing, I indicated that two boats will be made available mm -hmm. for persons, residents of Pity Martinique, to travel to Caricou for the purpose of shopping. Mm -hmm. I want to clarify that. Instead of two boats being made available, two trips will be made available instead of two boats. So it may be the same boat making two trips as opposed to two boats, as was said yesterday. I just thought I wanted to clear that up so the people of Pity Martinic knows that there'll be two trips and not two boats. Thanks. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, colleagues, and thank you, viewers. Of course, we know this is something new for everybody, and we're all trying to accommodate people as much as possible. So let us work with the um, government and, of course, the Ministry of Health and the Royal Grenada Police Force as much as we can. And as P.S. Maureen said, good news for uh, farmers, fishermen, and the people, of course, who like to have the fresh produce and the fish and all that. And as Superintendent Vanny Cohen said, it is not time for sightseeing. Let us do what we have to do purposefully and get back home. We are still under the curfew period. So thank you so much for viewing. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson.